Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the future of theology, essays to honor Jürgen Moltmann. We're going to take a look at uh, a great theologian, one I really appreciate, very deep in his theological presentation. That's Paul Ricoeur. It's the final lesson in this collection. It's pages 284 to 298. And we're going to deal with theonomy and autonomy. And he's going to look at that from a Hebrew perspective. So let's begin with block one. And the moral axis is the backbone of the Hebrew Bible as law of divine origin, which challenges the idea of the autonomy of moral conscience. How can autonomy be compatible with theonomy? Under theonomy, the bestowal of law is coupled with the story of liberation. This is the foundation of the narrative identity of Israel. The law belongs to a people called to freedom. The event of the bestowal of law becomes foundational event for Israel. So note three, next, the foundational event is linked to creation narrative. The call of prophets belongs to foundational events. Creation is a narrative older than history itself, and the law is perceived by Israel as already being present at the moment of creation, inherently present at the moment of creation. Therefore, bestowal of law and creation narrative equals an eschatological interpretation of Law is already present at creation. By correcting earlier narratives, the idea of an absolute beginning is signified. The identity of Israel in past deliverance leads them to perceive history as threat and hope. Threat but always containing the possibility of hope. History as threat and hope. It's a dialectic of menace and hope. The law, therefore, is not something imposed from without, Instead, it is imprinted in the human heart as the interiorization of this injunction. The word of the other is an other that dwells within the self. So, Ricoeur concludes in block one with the word of the other. The character of the law is horizontal in that it links human beings together. It is vertical in that relationship between God and the self. Covenant brings the relational God into confrontation with the relational self. It's constituted in the exchange of promise, which uh, from a Hebrew perspective could also be exchange of law. We offer the promise of obedience in response to God's law. We offer the promise of obedience. Now, to look at the concrete side of it, that's the theoretical side of theonomy and autonomy. Now we want to look at the concrete side, and that's when universal law becomes articulated and concrete as particular laws. So block one is the law from above. Block two is the concrete particular laws that are perceived. So block two... The moral codes are both universal and from above, particular and everyday practical. And that defines the notion of theonomy, says Ricoeur. It's a particularity abbreviated under a universality, law and laws, which are dialectically related. That makes perfect sense. You've got the universality of God's law from above, which we grasp as best we can and form into particular laws. Now, the third trait of moral codes, the law enjoins the loving God with the self's heart. Can love be commanded? There's a difference between commandment and law, says Ricoeur in the Hebrew mind. As a commandment, love can be ordained or ordered. Therefore, universal law and particular laws lead to the command to love. God's love 
appeals for reciprocity. Meditation on the command to love takes its place as the middle moment, the second moment of the Revelation Triad. So your triad consists of the following, says Rekur. Creation, the law from above, and joins us in God's appeal. And then Revelation, meditation on love is middle moment, and then redemption, concretization into specific particular laws as redemptive works. Meditation on love as revelation. Creation is the foundation of all things. Revelation is the rebirth of the soul. Redemption is perceiving the coming reign of God and participation in that coming reign of God. Therefore, Recours says love should be defined as hinge moment. It's hinge moment between subjectivity and objectivity. Love is hinge moment. It's a, in phenomenology, it's that realm of positing, of internal externality, and that's where we meditate on love. Creation is behind it. Messianism is ahead of it. We live in a perpetually imminent future, which becomes concrete as works, as dispersed in laws. So law as dispersed in laws takes place in the community of face. The injunction to love increasingly arises in the self, spreading out in communal life. The enjoining love of God surprises us and creates responsibility toward the fragile. This responsibility toward the fragile emerges. So we get to the concrete place of going out of the self and responsibility toward the fragile. Theonomy is loving obedience, inviting autonomy to go to its very limit. And that means suppressing self-sufficiency to reach true, authentic, real responsibility. Therefore, the concrete moment, block two, concludes with reaching responsibility. God's love obliges it's the origin of moral obligation, economy of gift, is that meditation born again moment, and then uh, where we internalize God's enjoining love, and then concrete conceptualization, we posit the ideal of community as praxis abbreviated under the universal. So we got our theoretical moment in block one of law. We've got a concrete moment in block two of particular laws as working out theoretical law. Now we need to look at return moment. And that's going to be love, justice, and return moment in block three. Love also acts in intensity. The command to love transitions to a plurality of neighbors. It is love on behalf of justice, says Ricoeur. It recognizes difference between individual persons, love toward the difference between persons, and difference is bound up with otherness. Justice finds its object as the faceless other, in whom the self is bound. We extend the communal face-to-face -to, -face to the faceless others, contributing to the irreplaceability of every person. Therefore, it is a love on behalf of justice facing the faceless others, which means affirming the irreplaceability of all neighbors. Spheres of free action are threatened by adversaries, but in ethics of communication, that's what Ricoeur calls it, an ethics of communication must succeed against this adversary and not slip back into subjectivity. That would be a true negative to slip back into subjectivity. Mutuality is a necessary presupposition for our dialogical structure. So we're talking about the dialogical structure of love. Open dialogue must guard against excessive ambition in the form of hubris or pride. The dialectic of love and justice then takes on its form. Dependency becomes coupled with antecedents, a certain foundational passivity. Now, take note of that. Foundational passivity. That never escapes the self. So 
So to conclude a beautiful essay, we will look at uh, Block 3, Note 5, The End Returns to the Beginning as Foundational Passivity. Because you've been loved, love in turn. The surplus of law, which Moltmann called the surplus of promise, is understood as God's comings, says Ricoeur. God's ongoing comings in reality. As return moment of love that is God. Therefore, concluding triad by Ricoeur, love, the foundational law from above that enjoins us in covenant, justice, meditative rebirth, and the call of the reign of God to go out of the self in praxis, return of God's comings, the surplus of law or the surplus of promise as love that we internalize in return moment. That is precisely what we have in a Christian phenomenology. Love, justice, return of God's comings. Beautiful conclusion to this essay. I agree wholeheartedly with Ricoeur. And Ricoeur always takes us deep into language, but we have to admit, through this entire essay, he defined his terms as he went. Every term was defined. He did proper semantics. He did uh, proper semiotics in sign formation. He defined every concept as he went along. And therefore, when we reach the conclusion, we fully understand what he means by that conclusion because he defined everything as he went through this essay. Ricoeur is superb in his mastery of theological language, and he does not leave the reader behind. He continues to redefine, redefine, and redefine his concepts and to fully explicate their meaning, which is a tremendous gift. Now, I've always had a great appreciation for Ricoeur, but I want to go over block five one more time. It's that significant. The end returns to the beginning as foundational passivity. Because you have been loved by the God who, lo who loves you and appeals for reciprocity, love in turn. Go out of yourself and love others. The surplus of law is understood as God's comings in reality. God is continually... Advent coming in reality. Then we go out of ourselves in justice, meditative rebirth, and the call of the reign of God to go out of the self in praxis. Then we reach, in the midst of ministry, we reach those moments of surplus of promise that uh, reveal deeper truth, which we will internalize and used to deepen the imprint of Jesus Christ on the heart. Ricoeur calls this the ongoing reality of God's comings in the real. And we know this to be true. It's in the midst of ministry that we discover new truth. It is not discovered in isolation. It's discovered in that moment of going out of the self where we are uh, enjoined by the Holy Spirit and we recognize and internalize the surplus of promise or the surplus of law from a Hebrew perspective. It takes us back to starting all over again. The end returns to the beginning. So once again, and like I say, anyone who's familiar with Ricoeur, we know that we can truly appreciate his great semiotic approach and truly giving us definitions all the way through, never leaving the reader, reader stranded, but explicating every term that he uses so that as we go through the theoretical law in block one and the praxis-based laws in block two, that we can understand what he means when we reach return moment of love, justice, and God's comings in block three. So the recall triad is law, laws, and God's comings. Theoretical law, praxis-based laws, and return moment of God's comings. That gives you precisely uh, the concluding essay to this collection of essays. And this book is a 1996 collection of essays 
but Wolf does a tremendous job here. I think the editing was superb. Every essay fed into the next. Beautifully edited. And profound teaching. And for anyone who loves Jürgen Moltmann and Jürgen Moltmann's theology, here he is, the age of 93 now. We have to appreciate this collection of essays. And uh, Amazon is just now flourishing, so if you look at this book on Amazon, you're only going to see one review. You say, well, only one review since 1996, but that's because Amazon wasn't flourishing in 1996. But now we can truly say that uh, we will see more reviews now that uh, uh, Amazon is up and running strong. But uh, beautiful work here by Paul Ricoeur. That's the final lesson, page, pages 284 to 298. And uh, we will discuss our next project in our next meeting.